Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital Needham is raising awareness of testicular cancer for Men's Health Month. According to the American Cancer Society, about one in every 250 males will develop testicular cancer during their lifetime. The disease usually occurs in young and middle-aged men and is generally treated successfully. As with most types of cancer, early detection is best, and one way to find out is through regular self-exams. I think that most of the time when patients come to a urologist's office, they end up leaving reassured and comfortable, more comfortable than when they came in. Um, a lot of people are nervous about coming in here because um, obviously there are uncomfortable tests that we'll sometimes do. No one is thrilled to come here. But um, I think the key is that if you're concerned you've got a problem, not waiting is really important, right? It, it doesn't take more than you know five to 10 minutes for someone to come in and have an appointment and get examined. And Again, the majority of the time, it's it's mostly reassurance that there's nothing wrong and they're not feeling anything of concern. But the few times where there's actually something wrong, you're right. The sooner you find it, the sooner you can fix it. We went to the urologist and uh, during a meeting with him, he did a just a general checkup to kind of see how everything was going. And kind of while we were there, he asked how the rest of my day was go looking. And I said, oh, it's pretty open. It's my first day of vacation. And he said, okay, great. Then he left the room, came back, and I knew something was up. And um, it, it came to my attention that he felt I had testicular cancer. The first step is usually physical exam, and then there's some suspicion. Usually we'll obtain an ultrasound nowadays to check for whether there's a mass in the testicle. And if there's a solid mass that has blood flowing to it, pretty much you have to treat that as if it's cancer. It's possible that it could be a benign lesion, but usually if there's a solid mass with blood flow to it, that testicle needs to come out. And so the diagnosis is really established by removing the testicle. That tissue goes to a pathologist who examines the tissue and determines whether it's cancer or not. When it comes to breast cancer and things of that nature, it's become very common that, you know, girls will talk about it with their mothers and women talk about it amongst each other. But Guys never talk about this, not once in my life, and I have yet to meet anyone who said, oh yeah, I asked my friends if they checked their balls. It's not a guy conversation. So I do feel like there's gotta be some level of humor in this too, because that's how guys handle things. It is the way to get my point across of basically everyone needs to check their balls, and if you don't have any, ask someone else to check theirs. I think probably it's a reasonable thing to recommend examining oneself once a month, for example. It's probably best done in the shower when your clothes are off anyway. And it's really just to become familiar with your anatomy to know what is your normal. When we teach medical students, for example, how to do this exam, we really try to express the importance of learning to feel for what's normal, what should it feel like, and have a technique for doing that and then be able to determine if it's abnormal. We don't expect every physician to be able to make a diagnosis of testis cancer. We just expect that they're gonna be able to say, yep, that feels like two testicles, that feels like the cord that supplies blood flow to the testicles. And if there's something that doesn't feel right, they should be sent to a, a specialist.